Hi everyone, we continue our discussion on compound interest. Today I'm going to discuss effective, nominal, and equivalent rates. And at the end of the lecture, you are expected to be able to differentiate effective and nominal rates. Derive the formula for equivalent nominal and effective rates. Solve equivalent nominal and effective rates. Solve equivalent nominal rates and solve equivalent nominal and simple interest rates. In our previous discussions, we just called the interest rates compounded at different conversion periods as annual interest rate or simply interest rate. So this time we will be more specific. If the conversion period of a compounding interest is annually, then the indicated interest rate is considered effective rate. We use R to denote effective rate. Example, in the phrase a 10% interest rate compounded annually, then this 10% interest rate is considered an effective rate. On the other hand, if the conversion period is other than annually, the indicated annual rate is known as a nominal rate denoted by letter J. Example, in the phrases 9% interest rate compounded quarterly or 6.5% interest rate compounded monthly, 7% compounded semi-annually, this specified Interest rates, 9%, 6.5%, 7%, are considered as nominal rate. Two different rates are considered equivalent rates if, at different conversion periods, they will produce equal interest on the same principal at the end of the same term or period. Okay, let us derive a formula how to find equivalent effective and nominal rates. So from the condition given, conditions given for equivalent rates that they are to produce equal interest at the same principal at the end of the same term or period, that means these two different interest rates will give us the same future amount of money or future value of money. So we can make use of the formula for future amount in compounding interest F is equal to P times 1 plus I raised to N, where again we know that I is the period interest rate equal to the annual rate over M, or the number of compounding periods in one year. N, the total number of conversion period in the term, is equal to the number of years times the number of compounding periods in one year. And so this will give us now F is equal to P times 1 plus R over M raised to T times M. Okay, so for an effective rate R, that means the conversion period is annual. So M is equal to 1. The formula now for the future amount becomes F sub 1 is equal to P times 1 plus R raised to T. Knowing in this formula, M is equal to 1. For a nominal rate, J, the conversion period is M. So the future value, F sub 2, will now be equal to P times 1 plus the nominal rate, J, over the number of conversion period in one year, raised to T times M. If equivalent rates will produce the same interests, then the two future amounts must be equal. That is, the future amount of money invested at an effective rate R is equal to the future amount of the money which is invested at a nominal rate J. Substituting now the values, we have P times 1 plus R raised to T is equal to P times 1, quantity 1 plus J over M raised to Tm. Simplifying the equation, since both sides contains P, so we can, or a factor P, we can divide each side by P, giving us now 1 plus R raised to T is equal to the quantity 1 plus J over M raised to Tm. Simplifying further, since both sides contains this exponent t, then we can raise the left member to the exponent 1 over t and the right member raised to the same exponent 1 over t. So plus
applying now the rules on real numbers, power by power, we multiply the exponents, so this C cancels out. And this C cancels out. That gives us now 1 plus R is equal to the quantity 1 plus J over M raised to M. So we now have a formula for an equivalent effective rate of a given nominal rate. We have R is equal to the quantity 1 plus J over M raised to M minus 1. Let us solve this problem. What effective rate is equivalent to 12.5% compounded quarterly? So we start our solution by identifying the given. Since 12.5% is compounded quarterly, then we call this interest rate as a nominal rate. So J is 12.5% or 0.125. And since it is compounded quarterly, then M is equal to 4. And we are required to find for the equivalent effective rate R. So we start our computation by using the formula R is equal to 1 plus J over M raised to M minus 1. Substituting now the values, R is equal to 1 plus 0.125 over 4 raised to 4 minus 1. And using your calculator, R is equal to 0.131 or in percent. R is equal to 13.1%. That means an 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 amount which is invested at an annual compound interest rate of 13.1%, or we also call this one an effective rate of 13.1%, will produce the same interest if it is, com if it is invested at 12.5% compounded quarterly. We have a problem. What nominal rate? compounded semi-annually would yield the same interest to 8.2% effective rate. So we're given an effective rate R equal to 8.2% or 0.082 and we are required to find an equivalent nominal rate J compounded semi-annually so we have the number of conversion period in one year is 2. So we make use of the derived formula for equivalent rates that their future amounts are equal. So we have the derived formula R plus 1 is equal to 1 plus J over M raised to M. Substituting the values, we now have 0 0.082 plus 1 is equal to 1 plus J over 2 quantity squared. So simplifying this equation, algebraically we write that Interchange the members because our unknown is found at the right. So we have 1 plus j over 2 raised to 2 is equal to 1.082. We simplify again the equation by extracting the square root of both sides of the equation. So we have 1 plus j over 2 is equal to 1.0402. So we obtain these values using our using the calculator. So we have J over 2 equal to 0 0.0402 or J is equal to 0 0.0804. Converting this one to percent, the nominal rate then is 8.04%. So please take note, you don't really have to go into the detailed solution if you know how to make use of your calculator. So simply inputting this equation to your calculator, it will give you now the value J equal to 0 0.0804. Okay, so in this problem, it says that investing an amount at 8.2% annually, or you have an effective rate of 8.2%, it will give or it will produce equal interest if it is invested at 8.04% compounded semi-annually. The problem, Ramon borrowed an amount of 14% compounded quarterly. What rate compounded semi-annually would yield the same interest? So we're given in here a nominal rate of 14% compounded quarterly. Let us call that one J sub 1, 14% and M sub 1 is 4. We are required to find for another nominal rate which is compounded semi-annually. So we are required for J sub 2 and M sub 2 is equal to 2. If these two rates are to be equal, therefore, they should produce future amounts which are equal. 
So using the using this definition of equivalent trace, we have our f sub 2 is equal to f sub 1, where f sub 2 is equal to p times 1 plus j sub 2 over m sub 2 raised to p times m sub 2, and f sub 1 is equal to p times 1 plus j sub 1 over m sub 1 raised to p times m sub 1. Since the principal amounts are equal and they will end at the same period, therefore we could simplify the equation as 1 plus j sub 2 over m sub 2 raised to m sub 2 is equal to 1 plus j sub 1 over m sub 1 raised to m sub 1. Substituting now the values, we have the value of m sub 2 is 2, the value of j is 0.14, and the value of or j sub 1 is 0.14, and m sub 1 is 4. So simplifying using now the, your calculator, we have the right number will be 1.14752 and extracting its square root to get rid of this exponent 2, we have 1 plus j over 2 over 2 is 1.071225. Simplifying further using your calculator, g sub 2 is equal to 14.25%. So using or from the, our computation, we say that an interest of an interest rate at 14.25% compounded semi-annually is equivalent to 14% interest rate compounded quarterly. Here is a problem. What simple interest rate is equivalent to 12.5% compounded semi-annually in three years and six months? So we are given in here a nominal rate of 12.5% and compounded semi-annually, so M is equal to 2, and the third term is three years and six months or 3.5 years. We are asked of an equivalent simple interest rate. So, based from the definition of equivalent rates, so two rates are equivalent if they will produce the same interest on an, or the same amount at the end of a given term. So, that means at the end of the term, they should produce the same future amount. So, for a simple interest, the future amount F sub 1 is equal to the principal amount times 1 plus simple interest rate times the time or the term and for the compounding interest f of 2 the future amount is equal to the principal amount times 1 plus the nominal rate over m raised to t times m so based on definition of equivalent rates the future amount should be equal that means t times 1 plus rt must be equal to t times the quantity 1 plus j over m raised to tm so since p in here is common in both sides of the equation, we can divide the equation by p, giving us now 1 plus rt is equal to 1, the quantity 1 plus j over m raised to tm. We simplify now the equation 1 plus rt is equal to the quantity 1 plus j over m raised to tm. So since we are to solve for r, we transpose 1 to the right. And further, we solve for r by dividing the equation by t. We have now r is equal to 1 over t times the quantity 1 plus j over m raised to tm minus 1. Having the values of all these elements known, so we are now ready to substitute. We have r is equal to 1 over 3.5 times the quantity 1 plus j is 0.125, m is 2. T is 3.5 times 2 minus 1. And using now your scientific calculator, you have your R is equal to 0.151 or R is equal to 15.1%. So the 15.1% is a simple interest rate that will produce the same future amount if it is invested at 12.5% compounded semi-annually for three years and six months. 
based from illustrated problems, we found out that an effective rate of 13.1% is equivalent to a nominal rate of 12.5% compounded quarterly. An effective rate of 8.2% is equivalent to 8.04% nominal rate compounded semi-annually and a nominal rate compounded semi-annually of 14.2%. 25% is equivalent to 14.14% nominal rate compounded quarterly. And a simple interest rate of 15.1% is equivalent to a nominal rate of 12.5% compounded semi-annually. So based from this result, it is important to note that for equivalent rates, the more often the conversion is done, the lower is the rate. I hope by this time you now have a clear idea on what are nominal, effective, and equivalent rates. Thank you for watching.